Hello, hello. So welcome everybody, I'm Dwayne Davison. On behalf of the Valparaiso International Center, the VIC, uh, we are happy that you're here for a presentation of our fourth Friday series on South Korea. So uh, thank you everyone for braving uh, the cold and the snow. Uh, good news and bad news with that. Um, we did have BTS and Blackpink uh, who were coming to perform and Unfortunately, because of the snow, uh, they were not able to make it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, for anybody who's over 30, uh, they would be the most famous bands in the world, I think, right? Yes, so uh, K-pop. Maybe we'll uh, be talking about K-pop uh, a little bit later. So I uh, wanted to just mention that uh, my sister-in-law, or my, uh, yes, my uh, niece, in law is uh, Jen Park, and so a shout out to Wes and Jen, who I hope will be watching this from New York City at some point. Um, as you guys know, we have recorded our series a Fourth Friday starting with last year. So uh, if you go to our website, valpovic.org, uh, you can uh, see last year's uh, presentations on uh, India, Bangladesh, Sweden, Canada. Puerto Rico, Spain, uh, and then most recently uh, Vietnam. Uh, last month, I'm sorry, I was in Arizona, so we didn't have a presentation. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the way it goes. I was suffering in the 70 degree desert <laughs> in February. So, um, no, we, we are uh, so glad that you were patient to wait until March, because uh, this will be a good one tonight. So uh, some years ago, uh, Jung Dancho, who is here tonight, um, helped uh, present on South Korea, and uh, he has uh, helped prepare some food. So as you guys know who are regulars, we always have some awesome ethic food, and we'll be doing that at the end, right? So question and answer, socializing, autographs uh, with Sean, all of that at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, let's see, September 15th, that's your save the date for the World Cultural Festival, our biggest event of the year, food, dance, music, art from around the world in downtown Central Park Plaza. As always, uh, you'll be see, uh, receiving an email, it'll be on our website and Facebook uh, shortly for that save the date. We are having a planning uh, meeting coming up, um, and we'll invite uh, folks who would be interested in helping us put that on. We are an all-volunteer organization, 501c3 nonprofit, so we rely on folks like you guys to help us out with that. Any uh, uh, thoughts on uh, performers and, and the like, contact uh, myself or a, a VIC board member. And uh, speaking of that, any future uh, presenters, uh, be open to hearing about them. Anybody who's from another country, lives in our community, uh, we welcome them. Uh, I can tell you that our presenter for April is here tonight. Hmm. Who could that be? We'll have to wait and find out, right? So, um, anyway, Sean Lee, born and raised in South Korea. Um, he's the uh, president of Apex Physical Therapy uh, here in uh, Porter County. Um, he uh, practiced in uh, Colorado in a small town, Elizabeth, and then also Aurora. Um, he came here for uh, better opportunities because I think he heard without really doing research that this was the Vale of Paradise. <laughs> Just said, that sounds good. I'm in. So Sean's got three daughters, uh, one in uh, Bloomington, one in New York, uh, one a senior in high school. And uh, the senior in high school is working tonight, so hopefully she'll have to watch the video with uh, many others. And uh, uh, Sean has uh, apparently done some physical therapy on folks in the audience. Um, for example, Kathy, uh, you're going to be, you brought your MRI machine tonight, right, for the follow-up. She just had surgery couple of weeks ago and hopefully she's okay 
Um, so he'll, he'll be uh, doing some adjustments after the presentation <laughs> if he hasn't had too much sake or anything else. So um, anyway, uh, so Sean Lee is our presenter tonight. Please welcome him to the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. Surprise. <laughs> Good evening. Well, it's my honor to be here, present South Korea. I wish I had some more time to uh, prepare for this presentation, but uh, if I screw up something, I hope I understand that, you know. <laughs> but <coughs> um, it's been a, such a long time since I graduated <laughs> middle school, high school, so <laughs> I try to bring back as much as possible. So thanks for coming, everybody. Um, um, all right, so how many of you you probably heard, all, all of you probably heard of South Korea. North Korea for sure. <laughs> but so any of our Korean war veterans here? Any, any of you? No? All right, so just want to let you know that Korean people appreciate all the veterans very much, so just want to let you know. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. If I probably wouldn't born even, probably. So <coughs> all right, so let's... Uh, let me present South Korea here. So Korea has about, it's kind of a, I mean, I was educated, it was about 5,000 years old, uh, but I was researching, it seems like it's a bit longer than that. But um, Korea was a country that where, um, has a nickname, Hermit Kingdom, that was like, as you can see on the screen, um, about 17, um, 18th century that they were kind of, cut off from the world and only China was a country they were trading into in, in, and also so nobody kind of heard about their country for a while that's about two uh, 200 years that's a long time like today like just like North Korea you know how <laughs> the country is isolated so <coughs> that's part of the culture of it so Korea um, the, the location of Korea is about between the Korean Peninsula is between 33 to 44 degrees of north latitude and 124 to uh, 132 degrees in east longitude. So to give you an idea, it's like uh, Indianapolis, it's about 39.79 degrees in uh, north um, latitude. So we are like, it is a little bit located south, a little bit south than um, Indianapolis. So, um, But it's very cold because north side of Korea is like, um, Russia in there that all like winter time can be really cold, very dry and cold. So north wind always blows down south. So we get all the cold there. And then summertime, it gets from the other direction from coming from south all the way up there. So it can be very hot and humid. So and we do get uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, typhoons. It, uh, it seems like a recent uh, 10 years, way more than used to be. So the weather has been changed, climate has been changed, and uh, it has been affecting a lot of things. So uh, that's where, because I often been asked about where Korea was, because it has South Korea. So people think that Korea is all the way down to tropical uh, uh, region, but uh, we are actually, as you can see, let me see if I can show you. Like this is where Korea is, and Japan is right here, and the, this is China. And the tropical weather somewhere like runs somewhere right around there, right there. I think that's the tropical zero degree right there. So we are kind of right over there. And this is the Southeast Asia right there. So, <coughs> and I just added more, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Japan and Korea, they are kind of a long neighbor, <laughs> neighboring countries, <laughs> good and bad <laughs> in history. Uh, we are good today, but <laughs> there are times when pretty bad, but I don't know if you can see <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Um, this is a, thanks to Alex, brought this map for me. That, so my hometown is right here, where I grew up, right here. So this is a DMZ right there, if you can see. The North Korea right there, South Korea, and uh, <coughs> Seoul is right here. And I'm gonna talk about that later on, but and then this is my hometown by the ocean. A lot of tour, beautiful area. Because I'm from there, I think it's a, probably the, the most beautiful place in Korea. 
Just kidding. <coughs> we have uh, this island down south. It's called the Jeju Island. I don't know if anybody is kind of familiar with South Korea. But, uh, Jeju Island is actually the one of the most touring, like a tourism happening in there. It's a beautiful island. A lot, I'm, I'm going to show you later on some, some of the pictures. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, so my hometown, if you look at it today, this is my hometown right there. And you look at the from DMZ, it takes about less than two hours, probably an hour and a half. So if North Korea comes down south, we better run. Just kidding. So. <laughs> but so I used to serve in the Air Force uh, in South Korea, where uh, I was actually lucky enough that my, um, where was my, I think I was, I'm pretty late with the geography here, but the, somewhere in the south, there was, there was my training camp. But I was lucky enough, they, uh, I was uh, assigned to my hometown. So that, that's the Air Force base that I was, serve, I, I was able to serve right there. So um, basically, South Korea is there ready. They, they, they learned the lesson a long time ago, you know? But, uh, so I served in the Air Force about 30 months and 15 days. That was my time I had to serve. So not because I <coughs> well, was drafted. So uh, every man has to go because of North Korea. So. Um, so let's talk about I'll, I'll <laughs> talk about some history of South Korea that uh, about age, and then so we have some dynasties. I kind of try to uh, uh, try to make it simple there, but uh, also brief history, and then uh, colony of Japan. There was a modern history, and then North and South divided, and then Korean War happened, and today where Korea is. So that's what I'm going to briefly talk about. So that's the outline about <coughs> tonight's uh, presentation. So you look at uh, Korea, I thought about uh, Korea was about 5,000 years old, but I think it's a little bit more than that. And uh, they had some evidences of found some um, those uh, potteries and uh, some hand axe and stuff like that. That's what they, uh, all this time that uh, uh, shows some of the evidence of it. And uh, it was uh, um, in between uh, Korean Peninsula and in Manchuria area. That's how we started off. And then, <coughs> so, first dynasty, they call it, is called the Go, I don't know if you can read it. Is it Go Joseon? That's the name of the uh, first kingdom they consider. And uh, King Dangun, did, um, he established that uh, kingdom there. And then, um, after that, um, the, the next, Dynasty. There, there were uh, three kingdoms in South Korea. The Gwan, the north is called the Goguryeo, and then this is called the Baekje, and this is called the Shilla. Those three three kingdoms divided basically, um, and that was lasted quite a while. I think about 600 years of uh, uh, different kingdoms lived together, old days, and then this country, especially. Uh, this country is called Goguryeo. It's quite an uh, interesting country. They were, if you look at the uh, geographically, like they were able to, they, were, they had a lot of uh, wars against uh, um, Chinese dynasty and they always try to, you know, old days had war because of it. But uh, these countries, they were quite safe for that. But uh, it was quite uh, one point, um, let me see if I, so one point, that is the Goguryeo that, um, so this was all the way into, um, it shows like a Jinlin province. I didn't have a chance to look at where it is, but this, this uh, um, still it was in, in that area even today. It shows about how um, uh, their territory, how far they were able to go, and it kind of uh, explains about with Chinese characters that shows about how far they were um, <coughs> far out there. It was one point pretty big uh, kingdom, but uh, it didn't last uh, all the way. So later on, out of these three kingdoms, it, uh, the one kingdom unified the whole thing. But before that, I want to show you some of the artwork from uh, Goguryeo. This is from, uh, because they're location-wise, if I show you, 
like because they're more about like the north side of the country, that's where a lot of mountains in there. And then you see the line of it today, this is actually a line of Korea, North Korea and China today, this line right there. But there's a big uh, uh, river runs through here. And, uh, <coughs> but also there's a lot of mountains around there too. So they, uh, um, so they, they weren't like so much of an agricultural culture there, more of a hunting hunting to uh, a lot of horse riding and stuff like that, so old days. So this is where they uh, show some uh, their artwork there. And this is a different country, it's called the Baekjet. If I go back there again. Um, so this Baekjet was uh, like right, located right there. <coughs> and uh, they, they were kind of well known with the artwork, a lot of uh, like this fine art, if you take a look at it, these are like uh, I think national treasure in South Korea, but very much so well um, made um, those uh, like um, like incense burner kind of type. So they do have a lot about uh, those uh, artwork um, supported. So, and then there was, <coughs> it was done by fifth and sixth centuries, according to that. And uh, so later on, before, uh, I'm sorry. Before uh, I'm talking about Korea, that, that there's out of three kingdoms, there's one kingdom they unify the whole thing, because the one in the north side of uh, Goguryeo was uh, uh, there's some political corruption to all this going on, and the country collapsed pretty much, and then southern part, like half of us, and then there's one kingdom is called the Shilla. They was they were uh, able to unify the whole country. So after that, there's a couple more uh, different kingdoms. Um, and then afterwards, that now it's called the uh, Goryeo. So the, the name, so during the, uh, the dynasty of Goryeo, they, they, uh, they did a lot of trading with uh, uh, Western countries, Middle Eastern through uh, Middle East, China through China. At that time, it was a kind of one of the kind of peak time of trade. So the country was kind of becoming kind of wealthy and doing very well. Um, and through that, let's see. And then, <coughs> so country was doing well. So their like, uh, territory was up to like where you see right there. So, so modern Korea is up to here, but the, at that time it was up to this just peninsula alone. And then, Little after that, 13th century, that you know where uh, <coughs> uh, the Mongol invasions happened. That's they, I mean, they conquered pretty much whole of the world at that time, right? So obviously, Korea's tiny little country. <laughs> it was easy for them to conquer. So, <coughs> so that's what happened. And uh, I think that uh, I remember in high school, in history, that uh, the king has come down and bowed to them and stuff like that, which is a very kind of insulting, right, for the king to bow, not, not even uh, their king, but their, one of the high officials had to do kind of, so that's the kind of uh, history I remember. Um, so, and then after that, uh, <coughs> uh, with the Goryeo dynasty, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you there about the, the trading, all this. So today, the, the name Korea, Korea was originated from that kingdom, Goryeo. So they, you know, Goryeo, Korean, the language is hard to pronounce. So these folks out there in the, in the um, uh, Middle East and uh, West, and uh, they started to talk, you know, couldn't speak Goryeo. It's like, uh, anybody want to try that? Goryeo? Oh, good. Maybe uh, my pronunciation is good, maybe. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, Goryeo. But uh, they <coughs> the name uh, originated from there. Um, that that's where they're well known. Uh, so they, they were saying Korea and then Korea, 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 they, it, it kind of came down to Korea now today. That's what I call it. And they used to spell it, instead of K, they used to spell it C, Korea. That's, that's, they used to do that. But today, um, they're using the letter K in Korea. So that's how name came Korea today, we call it. And then during the uh, Korea king, the kingdom, of Korea, Korea dynasty, they got, this is like national treasure, we, uh, treasury that like we have it in Korea. That it, it is uh, this base is supposedly very, very well made, fine artwork where uh, I learned so many times in school. 
So, and then also they do have at that time, <coughs> so 14th, 14th century, I don't know if you can see it, okay? 14th century, they have this, um, um, <coughs> the print machine that were before, they didn't do it. They were just uh, carving all this, but they made this metal type. You can move around, you can print that way. So it's very scientific instead of an old way to. So this is how um, the Gorya was the background. Their background was their um, the Buddhism was their national religion at the time. So they were printing out a lot of books. So that saved so much time, so much um, um, cost and everything. So it was quite interesting at the time. So and then now we move down to uh, Joseon Dynasty. So Joseon Dynasty is like. Today, if you ever watch the uh, Korean um, movies and dramas, they do actually quite uh, act based on Joseon Dynasty. Different kingdom, different time, different age. If any, anybody watched Korean, um, those dramas and stuff like that. So Joseon Dynasty lasts about 500 years. So uh, it's quite interesting that General Lee Sung-ye, he is a... Uh, founder of a Joseon dynasty. He was a general. He was supposed to go to the borderline between uh, Korea and uh, Joseon and uh, uh, the Korea at the time, Korea and China. There was a war. He was supposed to uh, bring his uh, soldiers and all military over there. So he was supposed to go out and assist that for the war. So instead, <laughs> he turned around, <laughs> head back to the capital which was, uh, I believe, Pyongyang, like North, uh, Pyongyang today, North Korean uh, capital. That was the capital that he turned around, went back there, and then basically he killed the king <laughs> and all like web related, and he became a king. That's how he established that uh, Joseon dynasty. That's the fact. <laughs> if any Koreans watch this, <laughs> they know it, but anyway. So this uh, Joseon, when each kingdom they establish, because they, they want to sustain their power, they don't want to get killed by somebody, so they always adapt some different kinds of uh, national religion. So, for instance, Goryeo was, they, they adopted the Buddhism. In Joseon Dynasty, was they, they're more uh, 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 Confucianism, like they, that's what they adapted. So today, even still ones in Korea in their culture, that uh, Confucianism, so that runs through. So. Um, and the also the next I want to show you is that this uh, King Sejong, he is uh, one of the uh, very respected kings in history that where he created the Korean alphabet that Koreans, not only Koreans, but I think uh, throughout the whole Asia, they were using Chinese character. So Chinese character is like very, um, you know, very, like, you have to memorize a lot of characters, but also you can put them together. So if you say a few words, that means you can say already, like, two phrases of a sentence, you know? So, so it can be very, uh, if you know it, you can, like, people who didn't study, they wouldn't understand what you're saying, but you, you would know. But, uh, so typically, high rank, uh, those, uh, like, government officials and high rank people, they were studying, like, Korea used to have different, like, a level of society. So the folks that, low level of society or slavers, it, like they, they didn't know how to read and all this. So this king, King Sejong, that he, he uh, him and his scholars, he was thinking of all those people who didn't know how to read. So he created this, uh, it's called Hangul. So that's the Korean alphabet. So it's just like English. You see how all this, uh, C, R, E, A, like they put the letters together, make a word, right? So just like that, it's a phonic system. So he made that, uh, so, for instance, it, I mean, it has evolved today from that time. So you're talking about 14, 18, around that time to today. So changed, but uh, if I read, this is uh, like Hangul. Have anybody seen Hangul ever in the past? Anybody? Okay, some yes, okay. So, so this is like a, um, that letter together, make one letter like a, if I read through, read through this, uh, so this King Sejong, Korean word, they, this, this is how they pronounce it. Sejong Dewang Keso Hangul Changjo Hashotta. So that's the word, Korean word. 
So, so Korean words are just like English. Like uh, when I was studying first, I studied English when I was in middle school. As, uh, <coughs> first time I got uh, got to uh, learn that, and I remember I had to memorize <laughs> a alphabet A B C D right through that all <coughs> and. Uh, so same thing with the Korean letter, but I remember English when I was learning, like even though I didn't know what they meant, but the certain words, but I was able to pronounce it because of the phonic system, right? So same thing with Korean. If you guys like, if you know the, uh, the principle of Korean letters, we have about 26, I cannot remember how many letters we have, okay? <laughs> it's been a while, but um, I think 26, 28, something like that. So they do have, uh, Vowel and the, uh, what was the other one? Anyway. What is that? Consonant. Okay. You know what it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, thank <you>. So, <coughs> all this, put them together, so they make this uh, letter. So, it's very uh, scientific in that aspect. So, if you, even if you don't know what it is, you can read it. You can read it. Yeah. You can probably learn it in one day. If you study hard, you can like, read, read it one day. That's how simple it is, if you know it. So, although you have to memorize it, right? But So, for instance, my youngest daughter, and my, all my daughters, I mean, they, um, they don't speak Korean, but maybe just very little, but, but they know how to read. So, yeah, they know how to read. So, <coughs> that's how, uh, so Koreans are very proud of this uh, Hangul, like Korean letter. It's like very uh, well-made letter, if you know it. It's like really nice, so just like English. So, I just want to show you the next thing is this map. You kind of wonder why I put it there. So, this map during the uh, Joseon dynasty, in Joseon dynasty, this, uh, the king told one of the uh, government officials, his mission was to draw a Korean map. And this guy, I'm telling you, all by his foot, walked all the time from here <laughs> all the way down. Yeah. And he drew this. It's quite amazing how he was able to draw, uh, draw like this. If the king asked me to do this, I don't think I could ever do it like this, come out <laughs> like this, you know? But uh, yeah, this is one of the history, quite amazing. Um, he, he drew that. And also, um, back to, so earlier I mentioned about Korea, uh, Korea and the Japan in history, how <laughs> we have a close relationship, <laughs> a lot of wars. Uh, <coughs> Because I mean, Japan was not right next to, if you look at there, like Korea's right there, and this is Japan, right there. So we are very close to each other. You can actually, I, one of the TV show, um, the team, they were actually swimming from, from the land of Korea to uh, first land, like the island in Japan. They were swimming all the way across. It took a while, but I mean, <laughs> so very close. Because of that, they, uh, in Japan, always, I think, is wanted to come to inland. So they, um, like, if, uh, maybe I can talk to you here. Oops, not there. So, 1592 to 97, total length, I think there were two wars in there that it killed millions of people. They, Japan was, uh, the, uh, internally, they unified one kingdom, and this king that he, uh, wanted to put all the, uh, um, um, the what do you call it, um, spotlight, all the, all the, the things that he wanted to put outside of Japan. So they, what he did, his strategy was attack jo uh, Joseon dynasty. Because Joseon was a very peaceful country, one unified country. They did not prepare anything military-wise, nothing like that. So they were like almost like <laughs> no military. Yet. There was a military, but not really well-trained at all. So they attacked uh, Joseon Dynasty at the time, and they um, pretty much conquered the whole thing. And, uh, it was a very um, brutal war. They, um, I think millions of people died from their war. And then, but Joseon had to uh, ask China at the time. I, I can't remember what dynasty was in China. They asked them for help. They came out, they fought together. They were able to defeat uh, Japanese uh, uh, military force at the time. So it was pretty bad. They kidnapped a lot of women, um, uh, stole a lot of uh, um, those uh, national treasury stuff, you know, all things, a lot of uh, missing. 
probably still today. But so that's what happened in the uh, old days. And um, also, what well, the next thing is the Hermit Kingdom I was talking about. Korea was also uh, in the 19th century, like 18th, 19th century, they were quite isolated from the world too, which is not the best. Um, always uh, Korea being a poor country, the Joseon dynasty being a poor country in the old days. So, <coughs> but throughout the 500 years of the history that they had all the, it doesn't show so clearly here, but uh, they showed they have a lot of artworks done. And uh, these are kind of all national treasures. I was able to grab something um, through the internet, but um, those are the, so kind of a lot of uh, art, I think it's similar to uh, from other countries, China and stuff too, but uh, they, because they got a lot of things from China. Um, but those are the artwork there. And the, Mrs. Nancy, if you could stand up for me, please. Like, if <coughs> so, so, she's wearing Korean traditional clothing there, tr traditional uh, costume. That, <coughs> yeah. So they have uh, so many. She has a white color today. It's a beautiful. Uh, it's called the hanbok, um, and they have a lot of different colors and everything. So we have, like, you can see some somewhat. Yeah, all the flowers and. The shoes, yeah, ladies used to wear those, and men wore suit like me. Just kidding. <laughs> no. They have a. Dip yeah. Walk, uh, <coughs> Behind that, the. Apuro ga apuro ga So <laughs> yeah, I don't think they had heels all at the time. Thank you, thank you. So, <coughs> yeah, the old days, they used to wear that all the time, daily basis, but not the good quality, but the, they, they were probably cotton-based, hanbok uh, every day. That was their clothing. So, after Joseon dynasty lasted about 500 years, and then the next thing what happened was, uh, because Joseon was so much of uh, isolate themselves um, from the West Force and all this, where Japan, was opened the gate. They opened up, they adapted all the new modern uh, technology and everything. So, yep, so what happened was um, at the end of the uh, 19th century, slowly Japan was taken over. And then officially, 1910, that's where uh, Japan took over. So Korea, the Joseon Dynasty became the colony of uh, Jap Japan at the time, until 1945. So that's like 36 years of uh, uh, colonization, that's a long time. <laughs> Anybody under age 36 here? <laughs> long time, it's a, yeah. It's a long time to be under somebody, uh, you know, conquering your country. So, so that's what the, the, like a history between Korea and Japan always uh, going on. Um, but we are friends today, so <laughs> all these, those are the history. But, uh, so <coughs> after the, uh, the Japanese colony in, in Joseon Dynasty. So what happened was after that, uh, after 1945, you know why the, wor the World War finished, right? That's why Korea was freed. Um, so at the time, after the World War II, Korea now um, was taken over by, North side was taken over by Soviet Union at the time. And South part was uh, taken over by United States and UN. So what happened was 1948, they tried to, uh, try to establish same one government together, but because of, uh, you're talking about communist versus you know, democracy, doesn't work together. So they failed to have agreement. 
so that North has their own government, South has their own government. So now you have two governments. First time in history, two governments. And then, but people were still able to go back and forth, North and South, freely. You don't need a visa, anything, just the same, con same country, different you know, ideology. So they were able to go back and forth, travel back and forth, and the people always do the business and everything. And then um, two years later, 1950, that's where um, Korean War happened. Like 1950 through 1953, Korean War happened. If you look at, uh, I think I showed earlier, Korea is a, a, such a small, tiny, small country, and it's divided in half from there. <laughs> Imagine Florida, a little bit wider than Florida, but Florida divided in half. So that's how I, I mean compare, but uh, I could be wrong. But it's such a small country. Um, so at the time, during the war, North Korea, they, they attacked South Korea in uh, June 25th, <laughs> 4 a.m., Boom, like out of nowhere, just they just attacked. They were preparing everything and they were attacking South Korea. There's, South Korea had no military power against any. They didn't even have a single like tank. <laughs> so that's how not prepared they were. And then they were quickly taken over by North Korea. And then I don't know how many of you are familiar with South Korea, uh, the Korean War, but uh, lots of casualties and um, thank God for uh, UN, United States and UN stepped in and they were able to uh, help them. And then uh, just to let you know, General MacArthur, he uh, is like hero <laughs> in South Korea. You can, when you go to uh, Incheon through the harbor, like you see his big statue there, it's still today. Because he um, had a genius strategy, military strategy kind of into half of it. So Korea is a long peninsula, so he caught, caught it half of it. <laughs> and <laughs> easy to take over the other half, went over. Um, you know, we just we just see the war, but the war has a lot of a strategy, and the, the short-term, long-term strategy is like quite uh, interesting, because I've been through the military myself. So they they have those uh, the strategies, and uh, that saved a lot of soldiers and easy to take over and all this. But uh, and then after that, Chinese at the time, Chinese also stepped in. So that's where a lot of uh, casualties happened. That's where most uh, most I think United States and the UN soldiers died from that point. Um, so anyway, it let the war lasts about three, three years, and uh, uh, it was most Korea, Korean War is typically like I heard like a forgotten war, right? I don't know if you heard of it, but it was very, very destructive, very, very destructive uh, war that heavily bombed everywhere. So I'll show you the pictures later on that. Like <coughs> if you look at those pictures, I mean, this just a brief shows of what has happened at the time. I think my mom, when I was a little, my mom used to carry me like this. My dad, too, like carried me on their back, too. But this is like, uh, during the war, war time, you can see it, all this, uh, the UN soldiers, US soldiers. And, and this guy, do you have any idea who this guy would be? <laughs> yes, sir, you got it. He initiated the war. And uh, Kim Il sung, yeah, he's the one attacked South Korea by, uh, with the uh, Soviet at the time. They were all the military uh, aid, and then he was attacking South Korea. And uh, so I'm telling you, I'll show you the number of uh, casualties and everything later on. It's, uh, uh, what happened here? Mm. A little bit of a technical, <laughs> technical difficulty right here. Computer time. Oh, here we go. I think we have to log in. Then. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't like computers too much, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so he is the one created the Korean War. And the loss of casualties and destruction, all things happened in the, at the time. So if you look at, there's a number of casualties. North Korea, North Korean, uh, I think this is soldiers alone, like 406,000 approximately died. It's still exact numbers, a lot of missing soldiers too. So 
numbers are looked at somewhat different by the different uh, uh, research and stuff. But and then South Korea, um, the South Korea soldiers, they died about 217,000 casualties. U.S. U.S. Uh, soldiers, 36 plus death and the wounded, 100 over 100,000 people wounded. And Chinese soldiers, uh, 600,000 people died. Yeah, you add all these numbers, insane. And the civilians, most of the civilians, you know, 1.6 million people, North and South combined together, died. Yeah. So, I mean, I think a half, more than half, of, about half of the population wiped out by this war because of this one man. Can you believe it? Yeah, this guy. He, uh, yeah, because of one man. Did you touch back on the Soviet Union? Soviet Union? Right, right, they didn't have to do that, but yeah. He wanted to unify Korea his way so bad, and he attacked uh, um, South Korea out of nowhere. And still today, they insist South Korea <laughs> attacked North Korea. That's why they still tell you today. Yeah. And unfortunately today in North Korea, they are all, I'm telling you, these people are all brainwashed. Brainwashed, brainwashed. They are completely isolated from the world. But because of China, they were able to get some of the, you know, the news from there. So they know what's going on. But they are, uh, you know, if I, so North Korea, for instance, like if I, um, there are five, the, I used to learn this. I don't know if they still do it or not. Five households, your neighbors. So if I say something against any North Korean leaders, next day <laughs> you, you will not find me. I'll be gone. Okay. So even mother and son, like families. They watch out each other. If anybody speaks against the government or the leader, and somebody's gonna tell the official, and then that person will be gone. <laughs> That's how North Korea lives. Like, so it's pretty bad. So <clears throat> that's the system they created. And uh, so it's a brutal war. And uh, in South, if through that, uh, after the war, there was really nothing left. Nothing but dirt. <laughs> even mountains, like, I don't know if you can see it, but mountains even. Some of the pictures I remember seeing that when I was a student. Like, there's no trees left. Everything got burned out, heavy bomb, and everything. So everything, this is all, I mean, it's not atomic bomb either. It's just, uh, just direct <laughs> through the war. Everything got destroyed. So if you look at their uh, gross income, national income, they made $67 a year. This is after war. Korea was the poorest country on earth, on the planet <laughs> at that time. The people, without the UN and the United States uh, aid, any like, my mom told me, my mom's 80 years old today, but not today, but maybe. She said uh, <coughs> she, was a, she was a kid at the time, but yeah, without the, uh, the United States, like the truck come, drop off food and stuff like that, they didn't have anything to eat. That's how bad it was. It, it carried quite a, quite a while, so very poor. Obviously, they couldn't even, the Korea was a, through a agricultural society. Before that, South Korea was. North was more of an industrial because of a different geography. Like, they got a lot of mountains, so kind of hard to grow, um, stuff like that. But South Korea is more for that. But um, everything was destroyed, so it was pretty bad. So. So you can compare the 1950 <laughs> with $67. In the 1922, they're making about 32,000 plus national average. Like that's what they're making. So that's the difference in there. The population, I'll show you some of the pictures. That population wise, 1950, 2.1 million. And then 2024, the recent, 51 million people there in that tiny country. <laughs> But when you go to Korea, you actually don't feel so cramped either, though. That's kind of interesting. But <coughs> um, so next thing is, is, this is a picture, some of the pictures I could find through online today, how, uh, how the country looks like. So they did have, uh, in 1960s, from that point, the new uh, president, President Park, he um, had a national plan how to develop, get rid of poverty of the country. So he did the quite a bit of, uh, um, and it, uh, like, uh, 
It's called a new town. I would, I would interpret it, translate it in English. It's called a new town exercise, something like that. I don't know if that's the correct translation or not, but every house, people were working all together to get out of that poverty. So through that, they were able to uh, get out of it because the people were very united at that time to get out of their poverty. Everybody worked together, very hardworking. And uh, <clears throat> through that, uh, now that they're, uh, as time goes along, they do have a more of a economic development, as uh, you can see on the screen. Like, uh, biggest thing, semiconductor said there's such a big uh, industry in South Korea, and then uh, automobiles and the other parts all the way through. Um, so Korea, they don't have much of a national, uh, natural resources. So they have to import it, make it, sell it. Basically, that's how they do. So um, <coughs> it's such a tiny country. So that's where they're at today. And the, the picture you look back and forth, like, <laughs> it's quite, <laughs> quite different in there, isn't it? That's why I put it right there. Yeah. So, and so in 2010, at one point, uh, when country was blooming, like they, they were like seventh largest exporting country in the world, like in that tiny country. That's pretty good. And, uh, and also in 2022, they were 13th largest economy in the, in the globally. And so, yeah, so how quickly they get out of it. So I'm, I'm very lucky uh, as far as my generation goes. I didn't have to see any of those bad things and I didn't have to worry about food or anything. I had plenty. But my parent generation had to go through all this kind of stuff. So I'm very blessed for that. But um, so, <coughs> um, so today, <laughs> I don't know when it started off, but uh, I remember when I was in the 20s, like just like um, K-pop, and I'm, I'm, I'm that generation I grew up. But it wasn't so such popular in the you know, West and any other countries. You know, but in Korea, it was very popular. And about today, I noticed like, you know, BTS, no, you probably heard of. <laughs> so <coughs> quite uh, getting popular about that, K-dramas, and also I heard uh, K-beauty products and their fashions. If you go to Korea, people, they dress up very well. You go out uh, in, uh, on the street and stuff. I think it's sometimes too much <laughs> in my taste. But they, so when I go to Korea, I, I you know, <laughs> don't look the best, you know, because <laughs> everybody dress up. like. <laughs> So, um, so part of it, uh, you probably heard Gangnam Style and those things, right? It's like a hit, pretty good. And uh, um, so I think their entertainment industries kind of continue to uh, grow. So, and uh, I'll just briefly talk about their religion in Korea. Um, I also I noticed that depends on what organization research to it. So there's some little difference in that percentage-wise. But about in South Korea, about almost 57%, some of them says 51%, no religion. They don't uh, believe any religions. And then there are about 20% Protestant, and then uh, about 15% Buddhist, and then uh, Roman Catholic, about 8%. And then there are some other, I think recently they do have a lot of immigrants in South Korea. So they have some like uh, uh, Islam and some other things coming into it. Yeah, so. That's kind of a country changing quite a bit today, I think. So that's the kind of religion. So I mean, I'm a Christian myself, but it's kind of interesting how more than half population has no religion. That is true, because I grew up as no religion. My parents, still today, my whole family, no religion. So. Are you guys familiar with the Korean food? Yeah. Familiar with the Korean food? Okay. So. <laughs> I was able to bring some few. Who never heard of kimchi? Or oh, everybody heard of kimchi? Yeah. <laughs> kimchi. Do you like kimchi? Yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh, you love it? Yeah. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, kimchi is like a fermented, uh, uh, there are so many different kinds of kimchi. Uh, over here, usually well known with the cabbage, with the fermented cabbage, with the, you know, the red peppers and all this. But uh, they do have actually quite a bit of different kinds. If you go to Korea, you can see so many different kinds. And uh, also next, like uh, bibimbap. I don't know if you guys are familiar Korean, but bibimbap is uh, also, I think anybody, a lot of vegetable in there. 
and the and then egg fried eggs there and then you put the sesame oil a little bit and then red pepper paste and you mix it up so bibim means like mix mix mixture so bab bab means like a rice but meal kind of used together so that's what it's called bibim bab you mix rice and other things mixed together and then ribs like korean barbecue it's like i haven't met anybody who didn't like korean barbecue <laughs> other than vegetarians and you know but uh, <coughs> really uh, everybody loves it it's just i mean it's my my favorite too and uh <coughs> so let's talk about um uh korea that uh, their uh, geographic what what they have um korea has I didn't know this until I prepared this. They have about 3,358 islands. Um, so yeah, that's quite a bit. Actually, mostly it's located in the south and west. So where I am, my home, if you look, I don't know, you can see it, but right, like right here, that's where the most of the islands are located right there. And the east coast where my hometown is, there's no such. There is, but not, not too many. There's one big island over there. There's a big island over there. There's so many in the south, south and right in the corner right here. A lot of them and over here too. And uh, <coughs> sometimes you visit today, like recently, like North Korea here, like this is a where very conflicted area. North Korea, they shoot uh, rockets sometimes down there to the island here. One of our uh, uh, military base there and they shoot back and forth sometimes. <laughs> Crazy. <coughs> you can guess who shoots first, right? But um, so that's what happened. Um, did I? Yeah, so about 6,000 miles of a coastal distance, like around so about 6,000 miles here. And then Korea, that's such, I, I've been telling you, such a tiny country, but it's covered, 70% of the, uh, the land is covered by mountains <laughs> out of there. Japan, similar, very, a lot, lot of mountains too. And then, um, so the people live around the around the coastline, right? Coast plain right there, like mostly, except for the capital area. Uh, they do have a lot of towns here too, but uh, living uh, area is not that big. And then Korea has a uh, <coughs> um, um, four seasons that I don't know if I put it here or not, but um, Korea has a very clear, like you know if it's spring. Spring is beautiful. Summer gets hot and humid. <laughs> Fall gets really beautiful, like beautiful weather. It's a beautiful blue sky every day, almost every day. Winter gets super cold, but dry. So over here, Indiana, you know, you get how gloomy, although we were spoiled this year though, you know, winter weather was so nice. But like over here, it's kind of gloomy, cloudy, like a lake effect, you know, snow to all this. But Korea typically very dry and very nice. You know, that <coughs> there's a picture, uh, you probably can't see it too well here through the screen, but. That's my home province that people uh, hike in the mountain, in the snow, kind of type. A lot of Koreans, they, they love hiking. Um, so these are the mountains. So this is a typical fall, uh, autumn season that a lot of the mountains, you go into the mountains, the color is very beautiful. Like you, if you've ever been to Colorado, like September around that time, you go into the mountains and start colors start changing, right? And the beautiful colors. So very similar. Like it, Maybe red, yellow, greenish, and all kinds of color with a beautiful blue sky. So Korea is a very, that's a good, if you ever think about visiting Korea, I would, suggest, I would recommend the spring or fall. Very um, comfortable as far as temperature goes and very nice. Um, and some of the beautiful mountains, you can go there. And the, in fact, uh, there's one uh, right around here. North Korea has a, they consider the most beautiful mountains in, in um, South, uh, in Korea, North and South combined. But <coughs> we can go there. <laughs> There's Shicha. <laughs> What's that? So this is uh, uh, down here, it's called the Jeju Island. So they do have a volcano, you know, it's, a, it's not, it's inactive volcano mountains. So this is a where uh, very famous uh, mountains I've been there one time, yeah. So you have to walk a lot, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, it's uh, the island they show. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very nice. 
So that's, like I said, that's uh, not only that, it's quite the uh, south part of Korea. It's a, they got a lot of uh, like a beautiful landscaping and everything. Like you see that you go to the, uh, you go to the beach, that like what happens is instead of white sand, or anything like that, they have some uh, from volcanoes, like, like similar, I never been to Hawaii, but similar to like, you know, those are rocks, the, you know, black, the holes in the, you know, I don't know the name of those, but stuff like that is very different. So it's very, um, famous place in South Korea and I think in other countries in Asia too. They, um, lots of uh, visitors there. And uh, obviously you know the Pyongyang is a North Korean uh, capital and Seoul. Um, <laughs> do you mind if you stand up for us? So she's wearing the shirt. Seoul, that's, yeah, that's uh, Korean that she was wearing, Seoul. <laughs> Thanks for wearing that. So, and then, um, <coughs> so major cities in Korea, like uh, Seoul is the major, one of the major city, which located right here. So how close they are to the, from the DMZ, very close together. And then there's another one more city here, it's called the Busan, that's uh, uh, quite large by the ocean, it's a beautiful city as well. Um, and the uh, Seoul was used to be, um, when I, when I was growing up, when I was in Korea, it used to be um, 15 million people lived there, used to be. But it's kind of went down a little bit. So 9.7 billion people live there today. Um, and then, so among all this um, success that South Korea has with the economic development, and uh, they have a quite uh, um, um, good, uh, the culture-wise, very family oriented and uh, very nice, very safe countries. I, 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 cons I consider uh, South Korea, Japan as well, one of the safest countries you can visit. It's very safe. People are very, uh, very nice to you, especially to the foreigners. Um, hospitality is amazing. Um, you can walk anywhere, it's safe. You don't have to worry about um, any like danger or anything like that. And the Koreans, they don't own any, uh, not, nothing politically I'm saying, like they don't own any guns, anything like this, illegal over there. So <coughs> that makes it safe too, but because nobody has it, that's the thing. But, but among all the success Korea has, they do have some socialists, obviously, every country has. So they do have <coughs> their, I'm somewhat, Korea is like more generation, myself, because we, there was kind of probably the biggest population there. And then now, um, their fertility rate has been going down quite crazy, very fast. It's a big national problem over there. So we'll talk about that a little bit after that. And the Korea has a too much high education. <laughs> Everybody's college graduate over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's almost like 70, 60, 70 percent of people are college graduate. That's a problem. And uh, Korea is one of the leading countries, unfortunately, their suicidal rate is, I think, is number one today in the world, in that tiny country. That, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty, very sad, uh, including celebrities and especially, I think, the uh, Internet's been so much out there. People attack, like, through online, stuff like that. So they don't understand how, how much it can hurt somebody. So <coughs> that's kind of a problem, too. And then um, Korea is, like, um, their hot, the education expenses are phenomenal, crazy. It's crazy. You spend easily two to four thousand dollars a month educational thing you're spending. So I'll tell you about a little after that. But it's a <coughs> so that's kind of a problem. And uh, there, uh, for you to see better, like uh, oh, the letters a little too big. Can you see it okay? So fertility rate in 2020, um, the world average was 2.3. So two people, average world, world average of 2.3 children. And India has a uh, 2.05, in the United States, a 1.64. Korea was 1.11. But I think today, 2024, I think it's like zero point something. Dropped even more. So because such high, um, uh, such issues with uh, such expenses. If I have a, a child, I'm going to spend at least $2,000 on this child every month because I'll show you why. Here, this is like a 
typical high schooler's schedule. But not every high schooler is like that. They sleep only, I'm telling you, three to maybe five hours, maybe more. I don't know. Depends on students. And then they, they wake up very early, like at 4 a.m. to um, they study. And then they go to school. Once they are done, now they are going to different schools. It's called the Hagwon. So that's kind of a private school. So voluntarily, the parents, they send them because the country is so small, so competitive. You have to study extra, triple, and quadruple more studies so that you can get to a better uh, school. Because for you to get uh, um, have a success in the school, that is very important in South Korea. That's kind of a big problem. Uh, I think it's just because the country is too small. That's what I think. But also, that's how I grew up. Sorry. That's how I grew up. And uh, it's not good. It's very, very bad to me. And then uh, they, and then after the school, they go tutoring, go another school, <laughs> and then time go home. <laughs> Some students study study more from that point. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's kind of insane. So, for instance, my experience, I used to go to school by 8 a.m. Um, and then by the time I come home, it's 10 p.m. Yeah, that was my time. Because I'm lucky, you know why? Because I live in the countryside, so I had to take the take a uh, co uh, the community bus to go home and stuff like that. So if I live in the city, yeah, I'll probably come home around 11 p.m. Yeah, insane. So that's how I grew up, and uh, I think they do still the same thing today. I mean, differently, but the same thing. That's a lot of Koreans. They num I think the number one reason they immigrate to different countries is just to avoid that. Educational problem, big problem. It's a lot of memorization. It's just not not creative. That's just my criticism about South Korean education system. It's not good. United States is so much better. The way I see, I see I, my children grew up here, so much better. I mean, we got a lot of problems here too, but uh, the quality I think is just uh, you can't compare. Maybe some other country may be better. I don't know, but I'm just comparing to South Korea. To me, it's a thousand times better. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we talked about some suicidal rate. This, this is kind of a big problem in South Korea. So this is United States, about 14 people per million uh, population. That um, that's the rate of it. In the South Korea, it's like 26 people per. Hun uh, I'm sorry, not million, hundred thousand people. And uh, over there, it's like a fifth leading cause of death. But it is the problem. It's like a lot of uh, even youngsters that. Uh, committing suicide, regardless of age group. A lot of people commit suicide because I think the biggest problem is, I mean, I show some uh, competitive cultures, mental health support. To me, the biggest thing is the lack of mental health, mental health support over there. That they, it's a part of the cultural problem. So they, a lot of them need help, yet they are embarrassed by even asking or going through. Then people think of me such some something. Um, such a small country, so that's kind of a big problem. They, uh, so they don't, people don't get enough mental health support, counseling and all this. Um, and so high stress in Korea, I think uh, people in 40s die of heart attack, big time, <laughs> stress, boom. <laughs> work stress, long hours of work and all this too. So um, those kind of a problem. Um, so I think that's the last one I have in the, yeah, the slide about. So, Korea has uh, uh, such short period of time, modern history, developed economically so well. You guys heard like a Samsung, LGs, and all from South Korea. I mean, Kia, you know, those automobiles and stuff like that, they've been come along pretty good. And, uh, and some other things too, but uh, different com companies too. Um, but also a lot of problems today um, along with it. So, but to me, I'm, <coughs> I'm glad I'm here and uh, but also, um, very, just personally, I'm very proud of Korea, South Korea, that how much they have achieved today. So, I'm very thankful for that. So, um, all right. So, I hope I didn't bore you too much. And uh, thanks for listening. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Ah. All right, so, whoops.
if anybody asks me about food, you are asking me the wrong person, okay? <laughs> but uh, Mrs. Dencho prepared all this. So, so this is kimchi that, I don't know if you can see. It's like a salad. Camera. Spicy. Oh, to the camera. Yeah. Sweet so, and sour. So I don't know if you can see. Mike, can you hear? Um. Can you see it? Good. Uh, this is made by chemist and uh, tastes like sweet Michael and Lee. sour and spicy. Sweet and sour spicy. So I made it like it for your thing. <laughs> the Korean kimchi stinks, you know. I can smell it. <laughs> you can probably do. And uh, this is a clear noodle okay. vegetable. Is that ready? Clear noodle and vegetable. I chopped the spinach. Uh, uh, pepper, yeah. Chop so all the vegetable cook individually, separate, and then egg. And uh, if you want to put a beef and shrimp and chicken, whatever, you can put it in. But today I basically make it vegetable, clear noodle, so everybody can share. So um, this it takes is really time. good. Um, this is a dumpling uh, mixed with the meat and vegetable together, wrapping by a thin um, dough. So you know dumpling is a thing, and we just grilled it. So this is decoration on the letter. <laughs> <laughs> and another one, the bulgogi marinated oh yeah. beef. Um, Slice the beef very thin and marinate uh, soy sauce, garlic, then. Oh wow! So everybody can Check eat. Check it. Eat. <laughs> That's a like well-known uh, Korean. We call bulgogi. Means bul means a fire. We cook right on the fire, marinating. And if you go to Korean restaurant, they have a cooking on the middle of table, so you can cook right there. They, uh, these are famous food for American uh, bulgogi. Thanks for making this. So, I wish I brought a little rice today. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but try. <laughs> Thanks for that explanation, uh, Jung. And uh, I guess One of the uh, good things about having fewer people here tonight than we normally have, and I attribute that in part to uh, snow, the weather. Uh, also, as you know, Porter County has spring break that started today. So I know a lot of people who have uh, left town, uh, basketball, all that. But that means more food for us. <laughs> so I'm glad they didn't come. All right, so as you know, um, Sean did say that uh, Korean is just like English. So, uh, Sean, if you guys could have a conversation in Korean. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, hey, I don't make the rules on the language. He said it was just like English. So, okay. Uh, Young, how about uh, a conversation with Sean? By Korean? Yes. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 네, 어, 만나서 반갑습니다. 만나서 반갑습니다. That means uh, I'm glad to see you. Well, Korea <laughs> doesn't have a good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We just say 안녕하세요. And 안녕하세요. The, then the poor time we say, did you ha have you ever eat? Because that time we don't have food. That's our greeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Uh, <laughs> 당신을 사랑해요. That's uh, I love you, Korean. Yes, I love you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I teach my husband, um, 아, 당신은 이뻐요, 사랑해요. Uh, I only let him talk nice. I love you, you are beautiful. That's only I teach him. <laughs> He's not my husband, but uh, <laughs> I told him. <laughs> She's a smart lady, I guess. Yeah. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. 감사합니다. Thank you, yeah. <coughs> We used to, when we say 안녕하세요, we bow. When I came to America, yep. first time, 
when I say hello, I automatically bow and then say hello. So I don't do that now, but <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, thanks, you. And uh, so uh, I wanted to mention that my oldest son, Landon, uh, traveled extensively in Korea. He went to the oh, Winter right? Olympics okay. recently. That's my home province, it was. Is that right? Okay, yep. awesome. And then uh, you may remember this, but my uh, youngest daughter, Giovanna, you, uh, she had a knee injury, and you did some physical therapy, therapy on her. And um, I if you're following along, you saw that the uh, most educated people in the world uh, have fewer children. And uh, you already know where I'm leading to this. I have four children. Okay. <laughs> and the average uh, apparently was, you know, two or whatever. And uh, so, uh, yeah, 1.1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1, I think, is, or no, you're below. Even below, yeah. Now. 0. 0.7 something. That's what I, I could be wrong, but that's what I heard. But yeah. 0. 0.7, wow. It's pretty um, bad. So um, also... I'm not one to put anybody on the spot, but uh, go ahead and uh, do a demonstration of Gangnam style, please. <laughs> <laughs> Never done once. <laughs> no? I'm a horrible dancer, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that was a uh, sigh uh, back a couple yeah. of uh, years ago. So, um, all right. So we've got uh, time for some uh, questions. If anybody uh, has one, just raise your hand. I'll get uh, around to you uh, with the mic, okay? On the Korean flag there, I recognize those four of those trigrams from the Yijing. It's four of the eight. Could you tell me what those signify? That was the one question I didn't want to get asked about that. <laughs> so I looked it up. I, didn't, I, <coughs> I learned a long time ago, and I never looked back. So um, the way I looked at I think it's the, uh, the blue means I think it's the water. Red means the fire. Right? Oh, is that it? Uh, I was already. Uh, yeah, I think. In the middle of the. The balance of the universe. In China used that too, but that comes yeah, from yeah. meaning. Plus, minus, woman, man, sky, land, like that. So, yeah, they. If I chill a little bit. Supposedly, yeah, they, uh, it symbolizes the sky, the earth, water, and the fire. And, um, and then, uh, yeah. And these four? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's for, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love my apple pie. <laughs> in Japan, do you have the same earthquake problem in South Korea? Uh, luckily, no. We don't have too much of an earthquake problem. Japan has a, there in the, in the line of a ring of fire, but we are, um, the closest one is like between half distance from Korea to Japan, like somewhere around here, but nothing ever hit directly in Korea. Japan gets quite a bit. This is a this is I think a line of a ring of fire, but they get quite a bit there. But yeah, <coughs> but I felt uh, I, I don't know if anybody felt earthquake. I felt once in nineties. That's where one time somewhere I think uh, far away from the in the, in the ocean, and I, I felt a little like yes, that definitely was oh what's going on here, <laughs> but very mild. But oh, okay. Yeah, they do get quite a bit. So, I mean, in Japan, I think they have to build certain codes, certain very strong structure because of it. So, yeah, so we don't we don't get too much of earthquakes. There's a Korean restaurant in Highland. On it has in up in 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 Indianapolis Boulevard near 45th Street. Have you tried it? And does it seem authentic to you? So. Um, <laughs> I went to. So, okay, my eyes. <laughs> so, number one, it's been a, when f they first opened up. So, that was, 
um, quite a while ago. I tried it, and uh, but it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was like authentic Korean food at that time. But I heard lately people saying it's really good. So I don't know. But that was a while back. Maybe at least it's been opened about ten years at least, or plus maybe. But it was a while back, so I can't really talk about that. The food. Oh, okay. I tried oh. Them all. Oh. I thought it was quite good. Quite good. Okay. Yeah, that pr- yeah, that's what I heard lately. Yeah. Uh, Sean, uh, you said that uh, Korea has the lowest fertility rate that's right. in the world. Um, have you ever thought about uh, changing careers uh, from a physical therapist to a fertility specialist <laughs> and returning back home? <laughs> no. <laughs> With a great emphasis on uh, school, how do you account for all of the good, excellent professional golfers, women and men? I mean, they, they're dominating. Yeah. They, uh, <coughs> so if I tell you, when I was little, I was uh, like in elementary school, I remember seeing a, a, a golf ball. And I didn't know what it was. <laughs> it wasn't a ping pong ball. It wasn't a tennis ball. <laughs> what is this thing? You know. <laughs> I remember seeing that, but um, I think it golf became very popular in ni- from s- nine, uh, like 1990s probably. And then uh, I think a Tiger Woods is part of the uh, thing that everybody knows him, and I think it has cu- quite uh, populated there. And um, there's uh, one lady, Sari P- Pak, yeah, have you, yeah. yeah, so if you golfers golfer, probably know. She also made it so big. And uh, I remember people watching her game, her first uh, LPGA win. They, everyone was watching. So again, Korea is a very small country. You gotta understand this. Small countries. A lot of uh, they're very proud of these uh, athletes and stuff like that. So they um, they're watching, and she probably helped that to grow golf industry there. And the people, I mean, they work hard. They, I mean, they you're talking about hours upon hours practicing. So these people, yeah, these kids, that's their career. That's what they, they're shooting for. So they, uh, also they do study very hard too. This is the thing. But they practice like hours. Yeah, I've, I've watched some of the shows. Crazy. Yeah, I don't think I could do it to my children like that one. But uh, Hugh, you mentioned about the education. Uh, I went to college with a guy, Chuck, who uh, became a counselor at an American or international school in Seoul. And... Uh, you, you know him, yeah. So he, this, he said that about 80% of his job is to try to convince South Korean students that there are other colleges other than Ivy League schools. Yeah. In serious, that, that's yeah. his job. They're, they're so focused yeah. on education, they only yeah. feel like the, the best is the top, number one. Yeah. And he said there are 100 other schools just like that you could succeed in. But and that Chuck was his job. <coughs> Chuck referred some very good students to Valparaiso University. Thanks, Chuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just wondering, you speak in Korea. If you were to go to China, are your languages close enough that you could somehow communicate? I mean, I think of Romance language, Italian, you can go to Spain, and they can sort of get the idea of what Similarity. they want to say. Similarity. Can you go to anywhere else outside of Korea, Japan or China? With the Very good question. That I can't answer. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> so Korea, uh, the Korean and Chinese, the pronunciation is very different. And the grammar is very different, too. Chinese grammar is more, uh, I think, close to the, uh, English. You know, how uh, subject, uh, verb, and like how it goes. Korean is the opposite. Subje- uh, subject, object, and then verb always goes last and the Japanese is similar to Korean. The, I think the closest one in the Korean and Japanese pronunciation is quite similar. Uh, some of them... Would you be lost as far as communicating? So the only way to survive is speak English over there. So thousands of kanji characters for Mandarin and 26 letters for yeah, Korean. Yeah, That's uh, yeah. amazing. And, and uh, 10 what? Uh, Vowels. Consonants. Right? Consonants. Yeah, there you go. Oh Just testing them. And, <laughs> and, uh, and speaking of a test, 
How many islands are there in Korea? Uh, if you don't say this, but how many islands exactly? <laughs> what was the answer? Okay. Very close, 3,358. Yeah, I didn't know either. <laughs> you're, you're the closest, so you don't pay for any food. <laughs> no, all, uh, as you know, all of our events are free, open to the public, <laughs> and uh, always good food. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you said that the best time to visit Korea is in spring, right? Spring or fall, yeah. Spring or fall. Is that, do, do they have the same seasons as us? Uh, yeah, so Korea is located slightly there, um, later to slightly lower uh, south part of uh, uh, compared to Indiana, but they have very clear four seasons. Yeah, so it's getting into spring season now. Yeah, so in, in probably in a few weeks, now you start seeing beautiful the trees and flowers like all blooming and it's such a quite uh, beautiful time. The weather-wise perfect, 70s, yeah, so it's nice. Under what? June? Uh, June, yeah, June can be, you take a chance. It can be kind of, it can be hot. But I think April, May are the probably the best time. I, I just had a question. Years ago, somebody told me this, that uh, I think they lived in Korea for a while, and they said that there's, uh, it means something, it's a cluck. It's Korean. It's a, they cluck? just cluck their tongue. And it what does that mean to cluck your tongue like that? It, it was a certain meaning? Okay. <laughs> oh, really? Right, that's, just, that's just a myth. Okay. Hmm. It's a joke for tourists, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have a presenter years ago, Zanelli Kutamo from uh, South Africa, and she demonstrated clucking. It was amazing. You think it's easy to do, but just the slight intonation difference, and that's part of the language. So, yep. I was just going to ask after Sue's question: um, Is it expensive to travel in Korea? Um, I would consider a dollar to dollar. Okay. That's probably the best way to, yeah. It's slightly, their uh, value is slightly less than here. So if you use uh, use American car, it'd be a little cheaper <laughs> than spending time here. But, but yeah, I would say almost like a dollar to dollar value, so yeah. But aside from the exchange rate, it is expensive to, to travel? Yeah, it can be expensive too, yeah. 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 And, so and what about daily life? like? Uh, Housing and food. So in uh, the difference in South Korea, the system is a little different. Over here, you know, you either pay monthly rent or mortgage you have to pay, right? Uh, unless you pay it off, which is nice. But um, over there, what they do, their system is slightly different. You can have monthly rent each month. So either it could be $500,000 or whatever, you know, or $2,000 or whatever you can um, do it. Or you can put big sum of money, deposit it to the owner, so landlord keeps that money. So whatever he can do, make money out of it. But, but then I don't have to pay monthly uh, rent either. So, so, you can, uh, so you don't have to worry about monthly be anything. So they do have a yearly contract or two-year contract. So once it's over, then you have to renew the contract. So they may ask some more, or maybe if, if you disagree, then you take the money back and move on to a different place. So. The beauty of it is like um, you saw like their like a national uh, GDP like their like 30 to some 20 20 32 something, but typically it's not con uh, uh, including that your monthly rent like in that money that they don't. The taxes are a little cheaper here too. So, and then um, the difference is there. Um, you know, over here you have to buy your private insurance, health insurance, and stuff like that. But over there, it's, a, it's like uh, it's not 100%, but I do believe it's about 80% is socialized medicine. So um, they do take the government take the check out, but not as much as we are taking out, like out uh, paycheck kind of type. So it's a little ex those expenses less. 
that was going to be one of my questions too about social medicine. Do they have social medicine there, and is there retirement for the retirees there? Yeah, they do have uh, social security retirement. They do have that, and also they do have a socialized medicine. So pay. So payer is a uh, government. Basically, the government pays for the service. So when you go see your doctor and stuff like that, you do have a like ten dollar copay, but that's all you have to worry about. You don't get any deductible to another portion you have to pay, other than certain services, surgery, certain things, and you have to um, pay for it. Like my dad, uh, one time he was in a um, not in ICU, but like uh, sub uh, what do you call it? Um, it's been a long time been, since been in the hospital, but um, not the general unit, but in between, not the ICU, but in between. Intermediate care. So he was there op almost a month. And then my mom uh, told me she had to pay about $3,000. That was her portion to pay. So that's not bad. And uh, because over here it could be <laughs> rack up quite a bit. But yeah, so it's, uh, and their, their medical uh, t technology and stuff, it's not, it's pretty good. As you can trust, it's pretty good. They're uh, pretty good quality. So it's not something, um, I don't see in general, there are some leading hospitals in the United States, probably the best in the world. But uh, overall, I think they're about the about similar uh, level of uh, medical um, care, I would think. So. I also wanted to introduce, uh, I don't want to call him out, but my son-in-law who's also South Korean, Charlie. Nice to meet you. <laughs> You had mentioned this before, but you said everybody has to go into the service, men and women both, just men. Just men. And for how long? So today, I believe they're about 20, two years, 24, uh, 24 months, I believe, yeah. Okay, and that's all the time. I mean, you're, you said it was a draft system, but it's not really. You have to go. Right? That's right. Yeah, you have to go. So. They're one of the laws in the military law never expires. So they just automatically like renew by itself. So if I didn't serve my military duty, even if I turn 70, they caught me, I have to go. <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all. They, 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 they enforce it very strictly. One of the laws very strictly they enforce it. Senior problems too. So a lot of seniors that, if uh, <coughs> you live in a certain like a level of economy, you didn't make enough money. So their social the re retirement you talked about, Alex, the retirement is not like here. So it's not uh, even near. A lot of people like if uh, they didn't make enough money to get the benefit after their retirement, so they don't. I don't exactly know, but they don't get much so that uh, it's hard to survive from it. Then and a lot of them, let's say, you uh, either you're divorced or you live alone and stuff like that, but you don't have anything. They often, like, they live in a, such a small place, like really tiny place alone. And, uh, you know, they isolate themselves, and obviously, you know, depression also kicks in, and so a lot of them. Even sometimes um, I hear quite once in a while on television, like, um, they didn't even know this person passed away for like several months. Yeah, even neighbors, they just buy the smell, they, you know, stuff like that. So it's quite a uh, growing problem over there because the working forces are less, but the retirees are getting um, uh, more and more, so. Uh, my final comment is when I was in middle school in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, we had one international student who was from South Korea, Samuel Lee. S A M Y U L Lee. Okay. And uh, later I uh, heard of another Lee from South Korea, and I thought, oh, maybe Lee they know too. each other. But then, uh, really, there are only like two or three last names in the end <laughs> for the entire country. Yeah. So, what's up with that? Park? So, Lee? we have, yeah, Park, Kim, Choi, Kim. Lee, Huang. I mean, so, I mean, so the, the, the reason we know, we have a, it sounds like the same name, obviously the same name, but they do have, like for instance, Lee. Like if I give you an example, so my mom's, so they do have an origin of Lee. 
So my mom's Li is from same as a Joseon dynasty, Shojoba, <laughs> same origin of a, the king's um, di- uh, their origin. Where my dad has a Li last name Li, but his origin is different, different area. So they go by the location or the city where from their ancestors from. So that's how you know how um, close you are to my. Let's say if you marry somebody, you know you don't like certain like a relative, certain you know this you can't marry them kind of type. That's how you know. So same origin, typical you can't marry. That's their kind of a. I don't. They change the law or not? They used to be like that. So there are so many leaves, but they're all different from different origins, different uh, uh, places. That's how we know. Uh, who are, oh, yeah, you're from there, okay, um, you know, so, but, so that's, that's how they know. So uh, last question, uh, so I hand uh, over here, but let's uh, get a new person. Hello, uh, my, uh, I'm Michael Gallo. Uh, I'm really interested in uh, environmental issues. I went back when I lived in China, I breathed the dirtiest air in the world, and I apparently mm-hmm. have heard South Korea sometimes deal with that too. So, do you know how they address the issue, or uh, what they have been done to cut air pollution? So, a good question. So, I think obviously they are shooting for like more of an electric, part of it, less of a diesel and less of gasoline. That I think that's a national project. Somewhat they do just like here a lot of a benefit to uh, lots of benefits to the auto companies and stuff like that. <coughs> and as far as the one thing, like in the United States, co- quite uh, the rules and reg- but as far as like a, when you uh, trash wise, you know, when you dumpster and stuff like that over here, recycle and the regular just uh, um, trash like that. But over there, they have a many different kinds of like, cans only, like newspapers only. So they have all different system. So that's what they re- try to recycle every part of it as much as possible. So, so that's how they try to work on the environment and the recycle all these things to reduce the pollution. Very good. So there you have it, South Korea, like you've never heard or seen it before. Thank you very much. Thank Sean. you. Thank you. Thank you. So remember, this uh, will be available through our website um, in several days. Thank you to Tom and Kevin for helping out with the technology there. And uh, we are going to spend just a couple of moments clearing the chairs off, setting up some tables. We're going to socialize and have uh, some of that great uh, South Korean food uh, that uh, Jung uh, and Alex's family has made. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, We will see you on uh, Friday, April 26th. Oh, okay. Do do you want to know the country? Okay, Kazakhstan. (laughs) Kazakhstan, it's the fourth Friday for April. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for coming. Be safe going home. Thank you.